Check out this music. I made a video lately in which I tested text to sample and I wasn't very thrilled about it at the beginning, but as you can see I've now made tons of audio with it because I found out that it's actually extremely fun to use. So in this video I decided to just make it a little bit quicker than in the last video and just show you three tips, three things that you can do in text to sample that I really like. The first thing I want to talk about is trying to work with the VPM of your project. Some of you might think that this is just logical but when I tried this the first time and in the other video I didn't ever tell it which VPM my project has so it just did whatever it wanted. Sometimes changed the tempo which is definitely cool in some way but as you can probably guess getting output that fits to the bpm of the project is just nicer to work with and i will show you now how i'm doing that first of all i'm selecting a loop with existing audio and then i'm bouncing it into a new track Make sure that it's not clipping, unless that sounds good. Now you have to open the tool. And now one thing that I didn't get in my other video, but it's actually not that hard. I tried to drag this into the plugin, but it doesn't work because this is not representing the underlying wave file. Double click on it and then drag this thing instead and it works. Now I can select the whole track and when I play it back, I got a perfect loop. And now if I were to generate something new from it, I could drag that back into the project. Now when I select this sample and put the time switch mode to raw, then it has the same speed as the audio that I had before. So I can just take this, drag it until here and then it will fit perfectly. Yeah, I think that worked very well. Again, this whole technique only works if you select the entire sample with this thing, cause then it will bounce to something that is just aligned with the other sample. So if you do something like this, then it doesn't work anymore, which is why I created this loop synced to the project and tempo of the project before importing it into text to sample to get a better workflow with the stuff that I get out of text to sample already. Now let's remove this again, because we are coming to the next technique now, which is what I call the genre band. The genre band works like this. The last thing that I had had the tags Roots, Reggae, Rastafari, Ganja, Sensi and I decided that this sounds kind of like Tech House. So I could just try to remove this part with Tech House, Slow, Deep, um, maybe Bremen, because I really like the tech house from that city. Maybe that is not too specific. Let's see. And just to test if it works at all, we can just set the duration to three. And when we take a context as low as possible with a low context, you can make the tool be a little bit more keen to transition into new directions. Cause at every point in the sample, it only looks back one second. So if two seconds ago, the sound was completely different, then it doesn't know that. Cannot consider that. So it has to come up with something new. So low context values will give you a better idea of the way it bends into the new genre. And with a duration that is longer than the context, we get at least one of these moments where it just jumps to something completely different. Yeah, I really like the way this is moving towards Tech House. And now that we know that this works, we can actually choose a longer duration because I like my gyro bands to be quite spacey. Maybe let's even choose a very adventurous seven seconds and then we can turn up the context as well because now that we have a long duration, it is also better to also have a longer context because that kind of smoothens the way it bends into the new genre. I feel like it sounds kind of trippy when it is a very gradual transition. Cannot make it too gradual because then it gets boring, but sometimes it is just right when it's slow and I kind of search for these moments so let's try this. This takes extremely long to bounce. The sample is quite short and the prompt as well. But since we had very high values on the two text boxes here, it takes a long time to render. All right. Now 
now that was a really juicy transition into the tech house genre so again set mode to raw and remove all the stuff that you don't need anymore let's go okay but did you notice a difference between this part and this part this one has stereo width and this one doesn't The reason why this one doesn't have stereo width is quite simple. Text to sample doesn't have a stereo output. All of the samples that you create are mono. So you might be wondering, what did I do here to get a stereo sound? And I will show you exactly what you have to do for that. And in order for that to happen, I have to generate two more samples here. <laughs> Okay, let's check this out. Ooh, I love that because it also referenced that long snare sustain that I had in the last beat in this one. So this is definitely something that we take. However, I must say that I I would have wished for this to be a bad take because then I could have shown you something that I wanted to show you. Now I just have to tell you, which is that if you do not like the output, then you can just right click and delete. I always wish there to be a button that I can just use to delete everything or maybe a feature where I can say it should delete everything that is older than a few days or a week or maybe that it shouldn't keep more than 100 samples at a time because I actually don't want to keep track of all of these samples. I don't want to go through this list and decide what I want to delete and what not. I just want it to happen without my uh, approval in the background so that I don't have to think about it. Now let's generate the last sample that we need for this transition. <laughs> It appears like I came in just in time to listen to the last sample. Oh, interesting. This time it didn't go into a full beat. But let's just find out if we can still use it. Would be kind of cool if we could set it to raw as well. Put it over here. And now we have our samples that are already synced with the project mostly. Sometimes you have to tweak the slices a little bit. Maybe we run into a situation like this. Now the next step is to decide for a main sample in this. So you have to listen to all possible solutions. <laughs> This one is pretty cool, but it's also, in the beginning I found it a little bit boring because it was only like choco 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 and then the fun part was basically that the snare became a rim. That was pretty much the cool thing about it. Now let's listen to this one. Now this one is cool because of that snare and I would really love to have this centered but I also like this part a lot. This one sounds the most spaced out. Anyway, I have decided. These two are going to be the side channels. And what you're going to do then is you go to one and pan it completely to the left and then you go to the other and pan it completely to the right. And that sounds like this. And as you can see that was very harmonic. You might be surprised at that point because I was when I noticed that. I assumed that purely AI generated content will sound kind of inharmonic because the stuff that comes out of it always sounds so different every time. But it's actually extremely harmonic because I noticed that it rarely changes the key of the input. So you can just do this and it will somewhat match. And sometimes it changes a little bit of the chord progression, but it's like so subtle that it could be done on purpose if it was a normally composed song. Now, the next thing I always do is not caring about the stereo channel anymore and just making sure that the mid channel is as tight as possible. The AI does an incredibly good job at creating music that is at a certain tempo, but sometimes it's not perfect. 
And you know, you, you might not always want it to be perfect, but if you don't correct it every once in a while, then it will drift further away. So you should always keep track of it a little bit. And stuff like this should always have a great impact. At the end, I often like to take away the last quarter note or whatever measure there is just so that I have a little more room for corrections. Now I unmuted the group again and we can listen to everything together. Something was quite odd there, not just that the side signal was too loud. So. When it comes to these side signals, I don't feel like they have to be time aligned just as perfectly as the other signal, but a little bit of alignment can help. Especially this rim should be pretty much tight. So when you got all of the slices right on all of your crossfades, you can dial in the volume of the side signal by simply using the volume fader of your group. can turn the volume down a lot to get more of a delicate sound, more something that um, sounds a bit more chill as well. Or you can get a more hyped up sound by turning it up. Very well. Now I'll show you another technique that you can use on these left-right layers in order to make it even more interesting in the stereo field. One of these tricks would be to use a frequency shifter on an extremely slow range. This gives the side signal a little bit more movement. It feels more like it is breathing and I feel like it also makes more of the impression that this was actually composed by a human being. But wait, what is this? Actually, I just noticed that I want to take away some of this stuff or more like I want to move this over because the snare is here. So I want it to be matching this transition. Now this has to do with the stereo as well, but you can do this for example, where you take away the mid track at the beginning and only let the sides fade in. At the same time, you let the last sides fade out and that way you can kind of transition between the last vibe and the next vibe so that the transition comes a little bit smoother. Because you know every time you make a new bunch of tracks with this tool it picks new songs out of its training data and you know all of the songs they are all mixed differently so it's natural that you get a sound that sounds like you are moving through a million mixes but that's actually the cool thing about it. The not so cool thing about it is that you have to make these transitions move and that is solved with these crossfades. And then you can maybe add some more trickery, like giving this first mid hit a little bit of a bump, make a little crossfade, get a nice little punch in the middle to introduce that the mid channel comes into it. These two, I can, or oh, what is it? Sometimes you can use the audio segments that you had thrown out of the whole equation for something else. Like in this case, I could reverse this thing and it would sound like this. Could add a fade. Maybe add a fade at the end as well to make it less ploppy. Add a new track and then I don't know, get creative with this. What would happen if it was here? That's pretty sick. I like that. At the end you have to make a group out of that group with the side signals and the additional tracks that you used for this part. And when you are done doing that, then we are back at point number one from my video, which is to select part of the loop for the next iteration of this process. Obviously this would be everything from this moment because it's just such a nice little loop. Just cut everything so that it's easier to bounce something out of it. I will not do that. What I will instead do before ending this video is just playing this loop for a while so that you can feel how a single loop of processed AI sound can be like.
I think that's pretty cool. And I could imagine even if people don't want to go full mad with this tool like I do and make mixes where all of the genres bend into each other, you might just want to come up with great little loops. And then it is in fact quite an inspiring and fun tool. I'm a little bit impressed even though normally I find AI tools a little bit boring.